when you look at me, what do you see? Do you see a teenage boy in front of you? Or do you see the boy who was kicked out of five preschools by the time he turned five? Do you see the boy who would cover his ears during circle time because the noise was too much to bear? Or do you see the boy who would recite whole scenes from movies he'd seen but couldn't understand why it was so incredibly important that he look everybody in the eye? When you look at me, do you see what makes me different? My name is Milo Gilad, and I was born on the autism spectrum. Actually, my name, is my, my name used to be Jonathan Gilad. I never once responded to my given name until I saw the movie that changed my life. The Adventures of Milo and Otis. <laughs> my sister nicknamed me Milo after the troublemaking cat in the movie. And from that day forward, I would respond to no name except from Milo. My parents would eventually resign themselves to my new name and legally change it to Milo Jonathan Gilad. <laughs> Today, I can meet your gaze, respond to your questions, and for all intents and purposes, act perfectly normal. But I am still different from other kids. My current challenges are not visible. One example is my processing disability, and I require extended time on some tests because of it. At times, I'll misread social cues and situations. I'm still learning how to cope with my struggles and what my struggles even are. But I don't fear being myself. Everywhere I go, I find people who accept me for who I am. I've learned that when you accept yourself, you find people who accept you. Getting to this point was not an easy journey. I could still be the person I was at five years old. My parents could have given up, but instead, they devoted years to touring the country with me, finding the best experts and specialists to work with me. Day and night, rain or shine, my parents worked tirelessly to get me out of my shell. They believed that with the right support, I could overcome my limitations and lead a full life. My parents would use every outing as an opportunity for me to practice my skills. When I was younger, they would take me to the Japanese koi pond, where I would have to buy my own fish food to practice my social skills. At restaurants, I would have to ask the waiter for dessert if I wanted it, and I always wanted it. <laughs> my parents were always my biggest supporters. They believed that in order for me to gain independence, I had to find ways to transcend my challenges. Whenever I was misunderstood and needed somebody to advocate for me, they would be right by my side. In the first grade, instead of playing with other kids during recess, I would walk around the perimeter of the playground. The school thought it was abnormal, that I wouldn't interact with other kids, and they tried to make me. My parents fought for me to have that time to myself, because what might not have seemed normal to the school was what I needed at the time. We should be extending society's boundaries on what is normal, we shouldn't be molding our children into what we perceive to be normal. My message is that parents shouldn't lose hope because their kids are difficult or different. Parents need to fight and advocate for their children in order to lead a happy and healthy life. I might be different, but I'm happy. We should be embracing everybody's differences while also ensuring that we can all have a place in today's society. Today, I am my own advocate. I recognize that I have challenges, but I strive to overcome them. I greatly value my independence. I can't wait to go to college, and I can't wait to face life head on. As somebody who literally took the road less traveled, I encourage parents and others like me to see beyond limitations, past, present, and future. Thank you.